Saints, we've been talking about the last days. And in my last two messages on my YouTube channel, we talked about the last two churches of the book of Revelation, the Church of Philadelphia, which represents the pre-tribulation rapture saints that are waiting, watching, ready for him. The first fruits presented to God of the harvest to come. And then we had the message on Laodicea, those not waiting, not watching. They're loving the world and the things of the world. And they go into the tribulation to be dressed and prepared and ready for the wedding. And in Mark, Chapter 1, starting in verse 2, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Those who know the presence and power of the Spirit of the living God have longed for, waited for, the coming Elijah and the latter-day reign. But what does the Word of God show us first concerning the coming of Elijah? In 1 Kings 17, 1, we read, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my words. What years? The years of Elijah are presented and come in regards to and parallel to this great drought. So the coming of Elijah, as we're waiting for these things and all this power and glory, what does it say? that there's a drought, there's neither dew nor rain except for by the words of Elijah. And what are the words of Elijah? John the Baptist, the Lord said he was Elijah. And what's the words of John the Baptist? To repent and prepare the way of the Lord. Those are the only words, the only thing God will preparing and preparing his people for before his coming to, to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. Just like John the Baptist and his message at the coming of the Lord in his ministry upon earth. If we're waiting for the outpouring of the spirit of Elijah, it's coming during a drought. And the only thing there will be is the words of Elijah and the John the Baptist to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. Elijah the prophet represents the word of God. God himself he represents. And the first thing you see at the coming of Elijah is this great drought. Rain comes in the time of Elijah, but only in a heavy downpour as seen in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 5. But we are waiting for the latter-day rain, that pouring down of God's spirit. But God said at the coming of Elijah, there's a drought. Because not only do we have a great drought of the living anointed word of God, but also all the earth is experiencing long periods of drought over vast areas these days. We see this spoken of, predicted in the word of God as far as the earth itself goes, as seen in Joel. Joel chapter 1, starting in verse 15. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is near. It's not saying it's there. It says it's near. Alas, finally the day of the Lord is near. And as Elijah was coming, there was this great drought. And what does Joel say? And it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Has not food been cut off before your eyes? Shortages of the food? Gladness and joy from the house of God. The seeds shrivel under their clods. The storehouses are desolate. Don't we see shortages of food all over the earth right now? 
The barns are torn down. Independent small farmers are disappearing by the millions. For the grain is dried up. How the beast groan. The herds of cattle wander aimlessly. You see pictures on the news all the time in other countries, especially poorer ca countries, the cattle that they depend on just wandering in dry, desolate areas because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep suffer. To thee, O Lord, I cry, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness all across the earth, Europe, Australia, Everywhere, there's these giant, vast fires across the western United States. They're everywhere, all the time. And the flame has burned up all the trees of the field. You see everywhere these vast fires start. They have no ability to put them out. They burn and burn and burn until all the trees are burned up. Verse 20, even the beasts of the field pant for thee, for the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. You see these things in the word of God leading up, alas, for the day, the day of the Lord has come. And in Elijah, the first thing you see is this drought. And in the word of God with Joel, he's speaking of this drought. And in the time of Elijah, during this spiritual drought, you do have this heavy shower. And in Revelations 3.8, the Lord tells us the church of Philadelphia, he tells the church of Philadelphia that they have a little power. Those that are waiting, watching, alert, not loving the world nor the things of the world, will still they will only have a little power. Us leading up to the tribulation, the first fruits, those going to be caught up in the pre-tribulation rapture that are waiting and watching, we will have just a little power. There was just a little rain right there in the time of Elijah, a heavy shower. And, they, and we will have only a little power as we wait and watch for his return. His return unexpectedly is a thief in the night where we were told over and over to be ready, to be watching, to be waiting. Those doing those things and waiting for him. They will be waiting for the coming of the Lord and they will have a little power. But all that power and anointing will be going to just one thing, the message of John the Baptist. Repent and make ready the way of the Lord. And we read in Malachi 4, 5, Behold, I am going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And in John 1, 9, and in John chapter 1, 19 through 23, what is John saying about himself? What did John the Baptist say about himself? We're waiting, and we're waiting. And these things are represented by the coming of John the Baptist. And what did John the Baptist say? I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? Are you the coming of Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. And in verse 23, he said, what did John say of himself? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Elijah the prophet said, I have a message on the voice of one crying in the wilderness. John the Baptist was the voice of the one who was crying in the wilderness. John was in the wilderness, and he heard a voice crying in the wilderness. He heard one crying in the wilderness. That is the Holy Spirit calling out, telling John to tell him to repent and get ready. John is only the voice of the one, the Holy Spirit, crying in the wilderness. And in Matthew chapter 17, verses 11 and 12, and he answered and said, uh, the Lord answers and says, Elijah is coming. The Lord said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came. So the Lord is saying that Elijah will come in the future. 
but he's saying he already come. It's the spirit of Elijah. It's the word and the work of Elijah. And these things of God are a wheel within a wheel. They never change. And in Matthew chapter 11, verses 13 and 14, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you care, there, look at what the Lord is saying here, saints. And if you care to accept it, he himself is Elijah. Referring to John the Baptist, he said, he is Elijah who was to come. Malachi said that Elijah was to come. The Lord said that John the Baptist was Elijah. John said that he was not, that he was only the voice of one crying in the wilderness because that one crying in the wilderness is the Holy Spirit. The coming of Elijah is the Holy Spirit calling his people who will listen and hear him to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. That's the coming of Elijah. It come in Elijah in his time. It come in John. It come in the Lord. And it's going to come in us who are telling people, preaching to people to get ready to repent, to prepare the way of the Lord in these dead and religious trying times in this drought of the spiritual life and purpose of God. The very first thing you read in the Bible concerning Elijah is in 1 Kings 17.1. And this is what it says, saints, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my words. And what is it that Elijah does, first there's a drought, but the prophet is provided for by God. And you see in 1 Kings 18, 3 and 4, that other prophets are being fed and receiving water during this, these, this drought. The prophets of God, those who know and hear and are waiting for him, they're going to be fed. They're going to receive during this drought time. For just prior to the coming Elijah, there is to be no rain until the coming of Elijah for his work. And what is that that Elijah does? He turns the people of God away from their worshiping with the Baals by preparing an altar separate from theirs and acceptable to God. Elijah's purpose is to turn the people from this dead religion, from this silly religious sacrifice to serve a living God and to present their bodies a living sacrifice at the work of Elijah and the preparing of the way of the Lord, all else in the kingdom of God will cease. There will be that one voice with that one purpose of turning the people of God away from their mixing with the world and the things of the world, including their mixing with the worldly, natural, carnal religions and dead religious works and the ways of this world. Will he come to the Jews? Yes, he will. At the middle of the tribulation, at the preaching of the two witnesses, at the end of the time of the Gentiles, the Jews will turn to him. And that will be the preaching, the coming of Elijah to the Jews. And God will turn them to his son during the tribulation in a wonderful, powerful way. Will he come to the church? Yes. And he will, prepare, he will prepare the church for his coming prior to the tribulation by his spirit, by the spirit of Elijah, by the spirit of repenting, by the way of those and to those who will hear his voice and will follow him. The spirit of Elijah is the Holy Spirit. And for those that are willing to turn from this world and the things of this world and to turn from the worldly dead religion, to turn to and be led by the spirit of the living God, he will prepare them. He will prepare them before the tribulation. Those that will be waiting, watching, that will listen, be alert, have their lamps lit. And these shall be caught up to heaven before the tribulation. But the rest 
will be separated from this world and the things of this world during the tribulation. It's not punishment. They're not ready. They're slaves in Babylon. They love Babylon. They were born in Babylon. They grew up in Babylon. They think Babylon's the kingdom of God. What does the spirit Elijah do and what is the purpose? In Malachi 4, 6, and he will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their father, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. I didn't used to understand this because in, re in regards to John the Baptist or Elijah in 1 Kings, you don't read about fathers being turned to their children or children to their fathers. It does happen as God's people prepare for his return. But what is really being said here? It's first and foremost, God the Father turning us, his children, to him and restoring our hearts to him and renewing his relationship with us and our relationship with him. But this can only be done by his spirit turning us from this world, from the things of this world, from the flesh and the carnal life that we have come to enjoy as we're slaves in Babylon in these last days. And it's to turn his people from the dead religion that they have substituted for our life with the living God. Hebrews 9, 14, what does it say? How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? God don't want us doing dead works. He wants us loving him. He's a jealous God. He wants us to love him and dedicate ourselves to him and be prepared for his coming. We want to substitute that with one or two days a week going to a building where somebody tells us something and we give some money. You're to be the temple of the living God. You're to have ministry and gifts within you that function and you all function together for those that will be led by the spirit of god in these end times there is only one purpose and that purpose is preparing the way of the lord by turning us from the love of this world and our dead religion which not only allows us loving the world but it encourages it turning the church from a dead substitute to a living God and to walk with the Spirit of God in truth and in light. I believe that the Spirit of God will begin to prepare us for the Lord's return at this time. We're coming into the time of Elijah, but there's a great drought. There's a great drought upon the earth, the land of the earth, and there's a great drought in the church, in the people of God. Everybody thinks because they got one of these mega churches, these giant churches where five, 10,000 people follow into them and they give in money until these people don't know what to do with their money. They're hiding it in the walls. They think that that is serving God. You're the temple of God. You're to let the Holy Spirit move through you. We're to function and live in, through, and by him. When you're together, when you gather together, two or three of you together, he's there. And you're to let him move through each of you. You're not to have this dead religious substitute where you give money. Do you think we can buy the kingdom of God? We have to present our bodies a living sacrifice. And this by bringing us light and making us able to walk in that light. How can you walk in the light once God shows you these things? I can tell you how, saints, it's the same way it happened with my wife and I. We unexpectedly had the Holy Spirit move upon us in power and glory, and we received the Holy Spirit. We were baptized. I don't mean this in some religious Pentecostal sense. I mean the Spirit of the living God moved upon us, moved in there in our presence, and he came upon us and we received him and we were filled with the joy and the power and the glory of the Lord. 
I'm not talking about a religion of Pentecostal religion. I'm talking about a life and a purpose. I'm talking about the spirit of the living God moving in, with, and through you. That's how you will walk. And once you're there, what do you do? You abide, as he said, abide in me. He's the vine. We're the branches as long as you abide in him. You'll have that water, that life from the vine coming into you, and you will bear fruit. That's what we're to do. Abide in the vine. Walk in the life. Receive the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and let that life come through us that uh, we would bear fruit. And what's the fruit? It's the purpose, the person, the life, the truth of the living God in, with, and through us. We like Enoch will walk with God. Then we like e Enoch, we will not be. We will be not for we like Eli Elijah and Enoch will be gone. But those who will not separate themselves from the world and the things of the world in this darkness will have this done for them by God during the tribulation. He will prepare them now. It won't be punishment for those who go into the tribulation. See my messages on the church of Philadelphia and especially the church of Laodicea that goes into the tribulation. It's not punishment. It's to get her dressed, to get her ready. As it says near the end of the book of Revelation, she has prepared herself for her wedding. The church will get prepared as we, those who get caught up in the pre-tribulation rapture, will go to his father's house and will have a wedding feast with him at his father's house and the door will be shut nobody else can get in then the tribulation will start and he will wait the father will wait for the bride to make herself ready and when she is ready she will be brought to the marriage supper and god will separate the light from the darkness and he will say it is good because we will walk in the light we will not love the darkness we must prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord to repent and be prepared for his coming.